Hello and warm welcome from um, Dr. Montavo that is joining us from our hospital in Tijuana and myself, uh, Ron Ellie, from our office headquarters in Sacramento. Um, we want to welcome every one of you joining us today for our monthly webinars. Um, happy 2022 and we wish you a um, prosperous year for everyone. Um, we're going to wait a um, few more minutes, maybe one more minute to have everyone joining us. Um, looks like we have a really um, high attendance today. So we're just going to be waiting just a little bit more. Um, just to uh, make sure we all have done our homework is uh, we like everyone to that has not um, fill out a health questionnaire on MexicoBariatricCenter.com. Go ahead and fill that out, and please select Dr. Miguel Montavo as the surgeon of your choice. And if you have filled the health questionnaire prior to today's webinar, still we can switch your doctor, your surgeon to Dr. Montavo. So there is no problem. So you don't need to submit or resubmit a second one. So as long as you have a health questionnaire and you attend this webinar all the way to the end, we would enter your name in the raffle for $2,000 off of your upcoming surgery um, with Dr. Montavo. Um, so we do this uh, webinar every month, and it has been one of uh, a success since, especially after the pandemic, because we used to actually travel to um, cities and states in the United States as well as Canada, and we had live seminars. And then once the pandemic hit we went online and we started doing the webinars. Um, so, but he has been a great success for us and also our uh, participants because they can attend this and uh, take less of their uh, daily time, you know. Um, so um, since um, COVID-19 epidemic became a pandemic and it became clear that obesity is a high risk factor for infection and death from COVID-19. Uh, we called our webinar collision of two pandemics. One is COVID-19 and obesity. So today we're presenting this webinar. Uh, myself, my name is Ron Ellie, I am the CEO and founder of Mexico Bariatric Center, MBC. And we have a uh, pleasure to have Dr. Miguel Montavo, board certified bariatric surgeon from our Tijuana hospital office. And uh, it's a pleasure to have you, Dr. Montavo. Hello, hello, good morning. Again, yes. Um, uh, Again, um, if you have not helped uh, submit your health questionnaire on mexicobariatriccenter.com slash health dash questionnaire, please do so and select Dr. Miguel Montavo as a surgeon of your choice and watch the webinar to the end to qualify to enter a raffle that's going to happen at the end of our presentation for uh, having $2,000 off of your bariatric surgery. Just um, touch on what, what are the subjects that we're going to, items we're going to cover today. Uh, we're going to talk about what is obesity, risk of being overweight, uh, COVID-19 risk factor, uh, and then we're going to cover what is a weight loss surgery and what does it have to offer. And we talk about our company, NBC, 
and different bariatric surgery options, which uh, Dr. Montavo is going to talk about. And at the end, we would open it up for question and answers where if it's travel related questions, I would answer. And if it's related to medical, we have a um, um, pleasure to have Dr. Montavo be here and answer all your questions. At the end, like I mentioned, we do the $2,000 off raffle. So um, obesity is a chronic disease and is affecting all of us and is affecting not only our country, but everywhere else in the world, pretty much. Um, um, so basically it, our genetics, our environment, um, let's say fast food, uh, lack of activity, because we all drive to work, drive to home, have no time to walk in a day or do exercise, stress, not sleeping enough, and some of the drugs that we take that um, make us gain weight. These are all, all factors and also developmental history. These are all contributing to obesity. Um, the fast food, the sugary drinks, the processed food, our body doesn't know how to deal with it because we, we haven't been, we, um, we were built differently over time. And now our body has to deal with this new uh, type of food, the processed food, the sugary food and the fast food. And that's why it doesn't know how to deal with it. Um, once um, obesity hits, it, it not only increases the fat tissues, it also changes the structure of the fat tissues. Fat tissues or adipose tissues on the right, it shows how it changes from a lean person to an obese person. As a result of these changes, our body becomes insensitive to insulin, to leptin, to even to vaccination is less effective. Therapies are less effective. And the data is showing that prevalence of breakthrough cases among people who are obese and have comorbidities is much higher there is higher chance of hospitalization, there is higher chance of death. So how is obesity defined in the medical term is body mass index, which is BMI, simply is a formula that you plug in your height and weight and it gives you a number. The number on the left, that is green between 18 to 25, that's a normal BMI. Once, once we enter 25 to 30, we are considered obese, I mean, overweight, I'm sorry. And after 30, we are getting to obese, obesity zone. And after 40, now we call it a super or morbidly obese. So BMI shows the severity of obesity. Forty percent of Americans are impacted by obesity. BMI of more than thirty is a major risk factor. And I like to show this video often in our presentation, which is a simple. Uh, animation of what obesity does to our body. Look at this. Our diaphragm is one of the major muscles that helps with breathing. Breathe in and the diaphragm contracts and the lungs expand to take in oxygen. But if you're obese, fat in the abdomen can push on the diaphragm, limiting how much air you take in. Comorbidities, uh, so the side effects of obesity are um, 
countless heart disease, stroke, diabetes, lung disease, impaired immune system, chronic inflammation, blood clots, insensitivity to leptin, to insulin, as I mentioned earlier. So coronavirus basically attaches itself to the fat cell receptors. And the more fat cells we have, the more breeding area is for coronavirus. And as you see, it attaches, it has more spots to attach to the fat cells. Mm -hmm. This is a data internationally collected from 400 patients international shows that obese patients are 113% more likely to get hospitalized because of COVID. 74% more likely to end up in ICU and 48% more likely to die. Of course, I have to still mention that um, you know, how we had different variants of coronavirus. Delta was much more severe and we're finding out that Omicron is not as deadly as the previous uh, variant, but still same ideas. Um, so during the pandemic and even now, Again, you know, we, we have to stay home more now, not to get uh, exposed mm -hmm. to, to the virus. So, you know, that reduces chance of exercise and uh, we, we sit home and constantly we're eating. So that's not gonna help the obesity. So what is the cure for obesity? to free ourselves from the comorbidities as well as viruses that can come along like COVID. Uh, well, one is diet and exercise and pharmaceuticals, but the data shows that diet, exercise, and pharmaceutical are not proven long-term solution to cure obesity. However, bariatrics, weight loss surgery, is a fast, rapid, and a safe and long-term solution, permanent solution. So how does bariatrics work and how, how is it that it changes and your life so rapidly and so permanently. One way to explain this um, phenomena is to look at brain and how it interacts with your gut hormones. And uh, basically we call it the body's thermostat that um, bariatric surgery basically resets your body's thermostat, and that's how you rapidly lose weight. Um, so I like to um, look at the diagram on my right side where I have three individuals. The first one in red is an individual that weighs about 250. So their bodies uh, the brain and the gut hormones are interacting at that level. So the, the body's thermostat is set, or brain thermostat is set at 250 pounds. With, let's say this individual does intensive workout and goes on diet and loses 75 pounds. That's huge. So at 175 pounds, the individual in the yellow, still the brain is used to that 250 body mass. And what he's going to do is going to say, well, I need to eat more 
So your hunger goes up and I need to retain my fat so the metabolism goes down. So that's why body is resisting against the diet and you're trying to get you back to 250. Now, the minute you do the bariatric surgery, like gastric sleeve or gastric bypass, your body's thermostat, your brain thermostat, right after the surgery, because of the hormonal changes and the interaction between the hormones and your brain, your body all of a sudden, it sees itself at a lower weight. It sees itself at 175 pounds. So what's going to happen is it says, I need to burn the fat and I don't need to eat as much. So your hunger goes down and your metabolism goes up. That's why within a year or two after bariatric surgery, you lose weight so fast because your body's trying to um, burn all the fat and is not going to eat as much. So that's why bariatric surgery is effective and is long-term and is rapid. So with people who um, are insured or underinsured or uninsured in the United States, what are the options to get this life-changing surgical treatment to get rid of extra weight and also become healthy? So that's where medical tourism comes in picture. Mexico is becoming uh, the top center for weight loss surgery as well as plastic surgery. And people are traveling, going over the border to, to south of San Diego in Tijuana, especially in Tijuana, to get treatment at, with all-inclusive packages at affordable prices and high-quality care. Mexico Bariatric Center, MBC, is the top player in this space. And uh, we are a US-based corporation. Our office, our main office is in Sacramento, California. And we've been committed to provide quality care at the most affordable prices out there. And uh, since inception in 2012, we have consistently done that. As a leader in this space, uh, medic Mexico Medical Tourism for Bariatrics, um, we have 10 years experience in medical tourism. We have performed almost 14,000 successful bariatric surgeries, and we work with seven. Uh, we just added one more surgeon. So we have seven top quality surgical teams in Mexico. Our, our process to get on the calendar is very simple. One, two, three. You do the, you fill out the health questionnaire. You put the deposit of 350 or 500. 500 is uh, refundable. And you get on the calendar. Then you book your flight. You finish your paperwork. Our nutritionist contact you and you start your pre-op diet, you're on your way to go down there and get this life-changing surgical treatment. Um, one of the pluses with our company is we offer all-inclusive packages. That means you don't have to worry about transportation, hotel reservation, pre-op, post-op diet uh, tests, um, the medications, the hospital fees. We have nutrition support. We have a huge support group on Facebook, almost 10,000 people. And our aftercare 
and our support with surgeon liaison is what you get with our packages. So you ask, when is a good time to go down there and do this? I would say today. Today is the best day to sign up and go get this weight loss surgery and basically add to your life, add to the quality of your life, years as well as quality. Of course, you know, since pandemic, uh, we have, we had to be very innovative of keeping our medical center open and keep our patients safe, safely back and forth. And we've been very successful in that. And uh, since our number one priority is our patients, we've been focusing on that and we keep doing the same. We'll be focused on, uh, you know, safety of our patients, well-being of our patients. Our driving teams in um, Tijuana, as well as Guadalajara, we have drivers that pick you up from the airport and take you down to our facilities. We like you to arrive before noon and have your departure after 2 p.m. Again, for people who joined a little later, please, if you have not filled out the health questionnaire, do so by going to mexicobariatriccenter.com slash health dash questionnaire. Select Dr. Miguel Montalvo as the surgeon of your choice and watch our webinar to the end to be qualified to enter to our $2,000 off surgery raffle. We have exclusive network of the best bariatric surgeons in Mexico. Um, Dr. Montavo, which is live with us today, um, he's a board certified surgeon. He's one of the best surgeons most qualified skilled surgeons we have. Um, of, of course, the rest of the team, the same, you know, Dr. Luisiana Valenzuela, Alejandro Gutierrez, Rodriguez Lopez, Jacqueline Osana, and our new arrival, Dr. Jesus Seja. We work in a hospital that has been doing this uh, for years and they're specialized in this one operation, which is weight loss surgery. And uh, they have intermediate ICU at the facilities. And our surgeons are using state-of-the-art equipment. We use the same standards that is prevalent in the United States, same equipment, same brands that is used, where there's a uh, you know, instrumentation, um, it's, they're using the same standards, staples. Uh, so the night you arrive, uh, we uh, do, the, well, the day that you arrive, we do the pre-op test and COVID test. And then we take you to our hotel. We use Hyatt Place. Frequently, we use uh, Marriott Fairfield as well. So it is between the two between the two hotels. They're both very new, and uh, they're high end hotels. So you be resting and ready for your surgery the next day. So at hotel, you get uh, broth and ice chips and jello, and uh, your companion can have free breakfast at the hotel. On the day of the surgery, uh, we tell you what time to show up. 
to get picked up from the hotel to go to the hospital. And that's where you meet your surgeon and you go over the procedure one more time with your surgeon and you're ready to, to get the surgery done. Uh, whether you stay for gastric balloon, we stay, keep you one night for gastric sleeve, two nights and bypass and duodenal switch, we keep you three nights. Um, we do the post-op test, multiple leak tests, and we have you stay there before you are ready to fly back to, uh, to your home or you drive back to home. Some people actually drive and get, they get picked up in San Diego International Airport and they park their car and they get picked up there and they go to our facilities. Uh, after the pandemic, we are not keeping you extra night in the hotel after your surgery. We used to do that, but now we're trying to do less touches and get you home faster. One of the reasons we've been so successful with the lowest possible complication rate and also, uh, you know, there is also success rate as far as losing weight, how much patients lose weight and how much they keep that weight off is one of the reasons is our surgeon's load management. We capping our surgeons to do limited number of surgeries per day. And that has been one of the reasons we have such a low complication rate and success rate. Dr. Montalvo has a very um, educated and skilled surgical team, as you see, um, and he is, a, like I said, he's board certified surgeon and his education and training is off the chart. Um, he has done, this data is old, he has done easily over 2000 bariatric surgeries easily. And uh, I'm going to, uh, after this, let him talk about himself. He's, uh, so the options we have is gastric sleeve, RNY gastric bypass, mini bypass, uh, lab band to sleeve, gastric sleeve to RNY, and gastric sleeve to mini bypass. Okay, Dr. Montavo, I'll let you uh, take over if you like to talk about yourself a little bit more, and also you can go over the procedures that you offer. Thank you so much. Hello, good morning to everyone. Dr. Miguel Montalvo, uh, bariatric surgeon of Mexico Bariatric Center. Uh, we are here and we are now taking all the measures now with this, with this COVID is affecting all the world. Um, talking about the, the surgeries, uh, the, the, the most uh, common surgery in all the world is the, the gastric sleep. In the gastric sleep is a surgery that it will take like um, one hour, four or five minutes to one hour to do the surgery. So it means that you're going to be less time at the OR and less, less complications. Um, the gastric sleep, we remove like the 80, 85% of the stomach. How? how we measure this, we put a boogie inside your stomach. This boogie is the a calibration uh, boogie of 36 French. And we do this uh, through your, we put this tube through your mouth and go to your stomach. Uh, this kind of surgery, all the surgeries here, we do it uh, laparoscopic surgery. It means that we only need four or five little incisions of five millimeters. So the scars 
uh, it depends of how do you heal. Uh, this proce procedure utilizes restriction to change your, the gut hormones that cause hunger and satiety. It means that you're going to eat normally, but less portions and the nutrients you are going to absorb is normally, okay? Uh, this is a, a, a difference with the bypass or the mini bypass. The, they are a, a malabsorptive and restrictive surgery. What can we expect with the gastric sleep surgery? The, the high amount of excess of weight loss and in the first two years, okay? After that, uh, in all the in all the bariatric surgeries, if you if you the, the most expected last weight is in the first two years. After that, if you continue following uh, a good nutrition and making some kind of exercise, you can you can continue losing weight. Okay, but it's very important to continue with a nutritionist follow up and uh, making some kind of exercise. In the part of the stomach that we remove, there's the hunger hormone that we call ghrelin. This, this hunger hormone is, the, is, is related the, obviously with the hunger. So when we remove this, you're going to, to, to have less, less hunger. So you're not going to, to need to, to, to eat more frequently because uh, in some patients is related with right now with stress. Okay. Uh, once you have your your gastric sleep, this hold less food and decrease the food intake, obviously. And it's a minimally invasive laparoscopic surgery that will take only one hour. The process is can be easily revised if you need it. It means in a future that is not very common, but uh, it can be a choice. If you want a, a revision, because I don't know, maybe uh, you start gaining some weight or you want to continue losing uh, more weight and you can do some, some, some exercise or continue with a nutritionist, it's more easy uh, for, for, for the surgery and it's, is less complications if you have um, a bypass because the bypass is a bigger surgery uh, and less 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 risk of complications. Comparable the, 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 the comparable weight loss with the bypass is is almost the same. All right, uh, no changes to the anatomy, and and the only thing is that we're going to to remove like the 80, 85% of the, of, the, of, the, of the gastric pouch. Uh, the, the, in the R and Y bypass, it's a, a bigger surgery, all right? So here in the gastric, in the gastric bypass, we only uh, keep like the 10 or the 50 percent of the of the pouch of your stomach and we need to make some connections between the small bowel and the and the gastric pouch so we we reroute the the bypass food and did mean that is you're going to you're not going to absorb of all the nutrients so what to expect with the with with the r and y uh, this will be to, to new stomach form to reduce the hunger and limit the stomach capacity. And you're going to, to have some limitations with the, with the nutrients, okay? So but it's very important with the bypass, uh, bypass or mini bypass, to have very good control nutrition because uh, you need to go to with your physician at home to check your, your blood levels. Of, of your vitamins, your, your blood levels uh, of, of hemoglobin and all that, all right? Iron um, is better 
is better, this kind of surgery is better with patients who suffer from reflux or GERD, all right? Because um, in the bypass, we do the, a direct connection with the small pouch of the stomach with the, with the small uh, bowel. So now your, your food is going to, directly from the, from the stomach and go directly to the, to the, to the small, small uh, bowel. Uh, this is now has the gold standard of bariatrics, the RNY, because it's the oldest and was the first surgery for weight loss. Improve obesity related comorbidities like diabetes, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, like the, like the other um, procedures of the, the gastric sleep. This, this have uh, like the 90 or 95% of the patients who suffer from hypertension, diabetes, the, or sleep apnea, they are not going to need more medications or, or the, the CPAP if, if you use. And the chains of vomit and dumping syndrome is very important to make a research uh, once you decide to do this step, okay? The duration of the of this this kind of procedures is like two hours, okay? Because we need to to make more connections. It's a, 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 a high surgery, and the the you will be at the hospital three nights. Next, please. And the mini bypass, the mini gastric bypass, or the one anastomosis bypass, uh, is is. This, this compare with the R and Y, uh, the, the connection that we make to weight loss is the same, okay? The only thing is that with the R and Y, the other connections is for people who had severe reflux or uh, have some, some um, fact with the, with the bile duct, all right? So, but the mini gastric bypass, is it's a more uh, more modern or the more uh, more new procedure, but the weight loss in both of them is the same. Okay. In this in this mini gastric bypass, uh, the same we we make a small gastric pouch about uh, we put like the ten percent of the stomach. All right. The intestine is looped to connect with the new stomach to decrease the amount of calories that you absorb. So this is what uh, makes this procedure a malabsorptive procedure, okay? And what are the expectations? Reduce the feeling of hunger through the outer gut, the early satiety of feeling full after a small portions, reduce calories and nutrient absorbs, and re resolve the type diabetes type two, Hypertension, uh, arthritis, sleep apnea, a lot, a lot of of of, um, of comorbidities. All right. The pros uh, is uh, only one anastomosis, and the duration, I believe, it will be like half an hour, forty-five minutes less than the R and Y. Okay. Uh, it's a safe, effective, and shorter procedure than the standard R and Y, and the most effective surgery is to reverse failed gastric sleep or lab band. Okay, and this is uh, a good a good choice if you suffer from 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 reflux or uh, uh, not not too severe. All right, we we can evaluate this this in each patient. Once you come here, we read. We reevaluate all the patients with the kind of, of procedure that you choose. Next, please. So now, uh, as uh, Ron already said, we know what are we doing, all right? So MBC use accredited facilities and our team are using standard infection protocols. Uh, we use screening of all patients and staff, CT scan for COVID-19, antibacterial station available in our uh, facility, fully compliant pre and protective preventive measures. And we, in, in, in the, this moment, not, not to currently allow visitors due to COVID measures, all right? 
what, what you should be doing to avoid coronavirus. In all, in all the, the, our procedures, we wear a mask, we take the social distancing, okay, two meters of each, the testing and the vaccination. It's very important, it's very important to, to have this for, for our, our self-protect in, in, in you, okay, from all the patients. I really appreciate um, your expertise to go over those slides. Um, now I'm gonna take over and continue uh, talking about logistics and travel. So um, our packages are extremely affordable, especially, you know, with the, with today's standards, you know, we um, offer packages close to 5,000 and, um, for sleep, of course, all inclusive. However, if you need financing, we work with uh, outside lenders like eFinancing, United Medical Credit, and Medicard. Medicard is mostly for Canadians coming in. Um, UMC or United Medical Credit is uh, pretty much our main partner and. Uh, they finance a lot of our uh, surgeries. Um, you can also look at outside personal loans like SoFi, uh, lending tree. Of course, you know, we suggest that if you are getting a loan not to apply for so many of these at one time because it will hit your credit. Uh, so just maybe do one or two at a time. Okay, so one thing I wanted to mention, if you have questions for us, please add it to the Q&A. And uh, because there are some, I see some questions that was uh, asked on the chat, which is okay, but I would definitely um, try to answer those, but we like to have everything in one place, which is that Q&A tab, okay? Um, So one question is, uh, why do I have to sip water while I'm having a meal? Uh, or I have to wait 30 minutes before and after my meal to have water? Okay. Uh, once you have your surgery, it's, it's important to sip. It's important to sip the first the first days, okay? Why is this? Because uh, you're having, you're, you're going to, 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 um, to, uh, uh -huh. you're going to learn again uh, to eat, okay? So uh, with, with the uh, sipping, you're going to avoid uh, to, to the air that we take when we we take normally uh, water or other kind of drinks, okay? So uh, you're going to feel full more fast. So it's important to to take small sips because you're going to feel full more fast. And 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 it's not the nutritionist don't recommend to to take the liquids with your meal, okay? The 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 right there or the rightly to do it is first take your your meal and then you can take the liquids. Um, they're asking, can you get pregnant safe safely after gastric sleeve? Yes, of course. More with the gastric sleeve. Um, why? Because uh, uh, with with the with the sleep. It's only a, a restrictive procedure, so you're not going to to have uh, some some restriction with the nutrients. So this is more safe for your for your baby. All right. So um, some patients or patients who, who suffer from from some cyst uh, on the on gynecological problems, 
the the have more probabilities for have pregnancy. Um. So this question comes up all the time. So if you can explain how many days uh, after surgery they need to be out of work and how fast can they start exercising? How fast can they do intensive exercise like lifting and things like that? Okay. Once you have your surgery or you're out of surgery, in two hours, you're going to be walking. This is a very important part of your recovery. So uh, you can do your normal activities after surgery immediately. And uh, so uh, if you need to, to, to return to work, we suggest to take a few days, okay? We suggest to take a few days, but some patients uh, have a, an office work and, and they don't need to make uh, a bigger, um, a bigger uh, things or or lifting, okay? So, if is it if is it very important to you to return to work? You can you can go back in 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 one week, okay? In one week at least. But but we we recommend uh, ten days for lifting. For lifting, uh, you need to wait to to you need to wait at least six six weeks, okay? six weeks. Why? Because uh, it's a laparoscopic surgery are uh, very tiny incisions, but inside, obviously, you have some connections, you have some stomach remotion. So to prevent, you're going to, to have some um, accident or somebody can hit you on your abdominal cavity. Uh, we, we recommend to, to wait six, six weeks to start uh, lifting. And to do um, exercise like uh, cardio, you, you can go back. You can go back um, at two weeks after the surgery. All right. Um, they're asking, what do you do before surgery? So I guess it's mainly asking for pre-op diet. Maybe you want to touch. So basically our pre-op diet the way we work is depending on your BMI, and it can range from two days only clear liquid if your BMI is close to 30, and it could be up to four to six weeks if your BMI is way up. You know, we're talking about over 69 and 79, but those instructions are all given to you once you sign up, you get uh, instructions. You also have access to our nutritionist. And we do webinars for PR post-op every month, at least one time. So you can jump on those and learn. Um, uh, you know, of course, you know, our nutritionist has been uh, sick out, but uh, we're trying to still support the patients. She should be back in hopefully next Thursday or Friday. Um, another question is asking about travel. Do, I, do we need passport? Yes, we highly recommend you have passport book or a passport card to make sure we have no issues coming out from Mexico border to US and minimize the hassle. Um, again, as, as an emergency, you can bring um, your birth certificate and your driver's license. Enhanced driver's license uh, work like a passport. And also, if you have applied for passport but you didn't get it on time, you can still bring the application that you filled out so you can show it to the border patrol to say like, Yes, I did apply. Here's my documentation, and I just uh, I just uh, couldn't get it on time. Um, they're asking if we have gastric balloon procedure. Yes, we do have limited number of balloons available to us, and but we have a, a different doctor 
that does that, but uh, not Dr. Montalvo. Okay, so another uh, travel related question is, is Tijuana dangerous? That's always comes up. Is Tijuana safe? Um, I would say yes, is as safe as it can be, uh, especially the areas that we have our facilities in, there are all prime locations. And, uh, you know, um, Tijuana is fast becoming like a medical center. Um, all the high rises, the development they're doing in the zones that we work, which is Zona Rio. And uh, another factor that you have to remember is you always are within our reach. Um, our drivers transport you wherever you go. Um, our staff in the hospital, in a hotel, they're always around on top of the hotel staff as well as the hospital staff the nurses. So we have our own coordinators with you all the time. So you're never alone. Um, uh, but again, you know, the areas that we are in, you can pretty much safely go in and out, go, um, you know, across the hotel, there is a nice um, area you can hang out, the shopping, you know, um, so it's very safe. This, they're asking, how do we fo uh, follow up with our doctor and state? And do we need to remove stitches? Okay, once, once you, you have your surgery and, and you go back to, to, your, to your house, uh, you need to, to make an appointment with your physician. You don't need to remove any stitches, okay? Because the, the stitch we use uh, are uh, they absorb, okay? So the only care that you need after the surgery is to take, to take your, your bed daily. And you can use some antiseptic to, to, to prevent, to prevent uh, wound infection or, and, and that's it. The other thing important that people ask is to when they can go swim, all right? So uh, if you, if you, uh, to public public uh, pool, we recommend six weeks. Once your 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 uh, fish healing well, all right, to prevent any one infection. But it's important to to have your appointment with your physician to a follow up. Um, the other thing uh, that that uh, we are located three three four minutes from the border, so you can. Uh, this is another uh, good point for for us, I think. And you're not you're not, uh, never going to be alone. Uh, the I can see the border from here from the office, so no, no, nothing to worry about. It's very safe to come here to to Tijuana, uh, like in the other parts of the world, all right? And, and uh, here, other other question is the this patient occasionally take pantoprazole. Would the BSG make it worse? The, the acid reflux have a lot of factors, have a lot of factors. One of the most common factor is that if you have some yatal hernia, is the most common uh, for, for reflux. Uh, and it's very important once, uh, when I get in in all patients, I check everything inside. So if I found an hernia, it's very important to repair this yatal hernia because that yatal hernia is a hole between on, the, on your diaphragm. If you uh, saw the, the video that ran already put a few minutes ago, uh, the, the, the diaphragm, uh, there's a hole and the, in that hole goes the, the, the esophagus. So, when you get your gastric sleeve, we need to, to close, or I need to close that hole to prevent first the, the, the reflux, 
and the second to prevent your new sleep go up to the to the thorax and then can be then can be um, an, an emergency so the other factors of reflux is the overweight and uh, other other factors is the kind of diet that, that you follow um, so so there's there's a lot of factors that we need to to discuss okay okay there there is a lot um, I get a lot of questions about um, the revision to mini bypass or bypass. What are the success rate? What are the risks? And um, maybe I can go, or maybe we can bring up our website for. Um, Maybe you can touch on the difference between uh, bypass and mini bypass really quickly. And then um, we can also do the revision. Okay. The, the difference between the bypass and the mini bypass uh, are the, the connections that we make. In the, in the R and Y, it's a, bigger, it's a bigger surgery, okay? It's a bigger surgery for, for for weight loss, because we need to make first the, the gastric pouch, okay? The second, we need to make a connection between the gastric pouch and the small bowel. And the other is that down, down of, the, of, of the picture to the left, you can see another connection. That is the, the, the second connection of in, in between the small bowel, okay? The R and Y is the, the was the first the first kind of surgery for weight loss. So um, with with this uh, the, in the in the in the years, obviously like all in surgery or medicine, everything changed for better. All right. Now we have the mini bypass. In both of them, we make a small pouch and a connection between the 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 gastric pouch and the small bowel. In both of them, the, the weight loss will be the same, okay? In, in the difference between these two procedures, if you see the second connection on your left side is for people with, with severe reflux, uh, acid reflux, or problem with the bile duct. So to prevent in this kind of patients that that acid reflux go, nearly to the gastric pouch, we, we make or we recommend to do the R and Y. Um, obviously, uh, um, a bigger surgery can have a little, a little more of, of uh, or can we expect a little more of or complication, but all of this, you know, the, the procedure are less of 1%, all right? And the most common, the most common symptoms um, are the most common complications in all of these surgeries is less of 1%, again, can be the bleeding. The bleeding or the one infection or, or a mini leak. It depends, but it, it, it's not, not very common. Less of 1%. Okay, let's go over the... Um, the revisions? Sleeve revision, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, the... If you, if you have a, a sleep, a sleep is a restrictive procedure. It means that you're going to eat less portions of meal, but the nutrients is going to be, all of them are going to absorb, okay? So if you have a, a gastric sleeve and you want to make a revision from the surgery, uh, this, be, this will be more easier than if you have a gastric bypass. Why is this? Because with the gastric bypass, is is a, a, a restrictive and malabsorptive surgery. There are more connections that we need to revision. You already have a malabsorptive procedure that you don't have with the gastric sleeve. The gastric sleeve revision is it means that we're going to Con, to make a, a converge, conversion or convert your, your gastric sleeve or the 
restrictive procedure to a malabsorptive procedure. We're going to come to make a connection with the with the pouch, with the gastric pouch, with the small intestine. Okay, so the, this this kind of surgery will take like like one hour, one hour and a half. Then if you have uh, our RNY uh, or a mini bypass, because you already have one of the biggest surgery, so uh, is is expect to have more more a little a little more complication because it's going to be more scars inside. We need to make other kind of connections. Uh, so so it's, it's, it's a little more higher to, 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 make, to make it. Okay, great. So that, that's you. why I recommend always, if you don't have any, to, first to make your research, make a very good research of what are your interests. And then if you are not, you don't have any previous uh, surgery. Uh, you can you can think to start with a with a sleep. Obviously, uh, not all the procedures are to all kind of, of patients. So that that's why always we suggest was the, the a good procedure for you. Just uh, just to add to what we see on our end is um, about five to 10% of patients in general, and the ones with the sleeve that they don't get all the way down to their uh, optimum weight and their goal weight. Uh, they come back for a revision and um, we see that, you know, sometimes in those patients um, go through either a sleeve to mini bypass, bypass, or do it and I'll switch. And um, they get all the way down to the weight they want. Um, so also, um, there was a page that, maybe we're gonna go over this too, because this comes up a lot, the question that, what is, a, how do I know, I need sleeve or I need bypass, you know? Um, so um, if you wanna touch on that too, like what determines whether they need a sleeve or bypass? You mentioned about, you know, like if you have um, acid reflux, you need to get bypass. So what is the criteria of they decide whether they should get a sleeve or bypass? Okay. Uh... Before I forgot, uh, and the, the other uh, very, very common uh, question is that how, how many time I need to wait before a revision? We recommend to wait at least two years because in these first two years is when the most losing weight that you're going to have. So after that, uh, and to, to prevent all the scars inside, to heal everything inside, uh, we recommend to, to to wait at least two years. And how is how we decide or how do you think is the best surgery for you? Okay, the gastric sleep surgery is uh, obviously less invasive surgery, less risk of, of complication, low risk of side side effects, uh, and and is the most popular surgery. Why? Because obviously in 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 all of these surgeries. Patients with, with uh, comorbidities like diabetes, hypertension, uh, sleep apnea, arthritis, gynecological problems, they are going to disappear like in the 90 or the 95% of them. So it means that you're not going to need more medication for this. So the, if, if you don't have a previous, previous bariatric surgery, you're um, with no no um, no problems, no medical problems or issues. Um, you don't have severe reflux. You don't have previous surgeries. Um, and and the, I at least I recommend to start with the with the gastric sleep. Okay. Um, yeah, the the gastric bypass. Um, if you have uh, the Severe reflux, 
you have a previous sleep and you want to continue to losing more weight, you want to convert your restrictive surgery to malabsorptive surgery, you can, you can, or we can, we can make a, a, a gastric bypass, okay? So uh, this, why is this? Because with the, with the bypass, your gastrointestinal uh, movements, your gastrointestinal transit is going to be altered. And with the, with the gastric sleep, the only thing to, that we're going to touch or we're going to remove is the stomach. So the transit, the gastrointestinal transit is not going to, to be uh, altered or, or, or some changes. The only thing here is that you're going to eat less. And the, the weight loss on both of them is almost the same. Okay, another question that comes up is, what if I have complications when I go home? It's, it's very important to, to take care of all the signs, all right? The, and, it, and it's very rare. It's very, very rare to have any kind of complications. The most common complications once you're at home is a, a wound infection. But this can happen at, with any procedure, with any procedure. Uh, a nail, if you have some cut on your, um, in, in your hand, uh, is, is, is the most common. But if you take your, your, your very good measure, you take care of your wounds, put some antiseptic, daily shower, you, you, you can avoid that. And if you're at home and have some, kind of complications, the most important is to go to OR, okay, to, so, so um, a physician can, can see you and evaluate uh, what are you're suffering. And the other is that most, and the other common is that patients is the, um, the, the hydration. That, that's why it's very important when you go home to keep hydrated, to keep your, your bottle of water, or uh, Gatorade, zero calories, your electrolytes all day to prevent that, that you can feel uh, like high rate of heart rate, uh, tachycardia, or not to feel very good is the most common. Okay, so... Um... They also asked me to go back to the financing page. Oh, let me go there real quick. Okay, that, um, so they can get a screenshot of it. Okay, let me make sure, yep, that's it. Um, oops. There you go. Um, this, this patient is asking that I have, I want to make sure I spell it right, eosinophilic esophagitis. And uh, it's caused by GERD. I was approved before Dr. Rodriguez. Is my condition going to be an issue? You're muted right now. Yes. Um, okay, let me see if I understand. This patient has esophagitis and she, she already e had the sleep? No, e eosinophilic esophagitis. Dr. Rodriguez approved her. She's worrying if she gets the surgery is going to be an issue. Okay, uh, again, the, we need to, to, to validate why is that esophagitis. Um, I don't know if you have GERD, severe GERD is the most common, but if that is the case, uh, I think that the, the best option for her is, or, or him will be the, the, the RNY to prevent the, the acid reflux because in, with, the, with the sleep, we, it's, it's like a small tube. So the, all the acid inside can go up to the esophagus and can continue or will continue with the with the esophagitis. So to prevent all that, uh, I, I recommend her to uh, to 
to put RNY or bypass. Um, the people who have suffered from PCOS, what is the recommended procedure for those patients? Um, weight loss, any weight loss procedure, because um, with the with the weight loss, this is related with the hormones, the the PCOS, obviously, like you already told them in the in, in the start of this meeting, um, is related with the with the, all the, the fat tissue. So when you uh, go to, to the uh, weight loss procedure, you're going to lose all that, all that hormones related with the fat tissue. So it, the, if you suffer from pre PCO, uh, this, this, will be, this will be less severe. It, it will, will not, maybe it will not disappear, but will be less severe. And, and if you're planning having some um, baby, it will be much probability to, to get pregnant. Um, they're asking, um, you know, I, I just wanted to mention something previously was asked about pregnancy. Um, you probably need to wait at least one year to, after the bariatric surgery to get pregnant. And because of the surgery, your chances of getting pregnant increases. And we see a lot of these patients that they get pregnant like right away after sleeve or bypass, and that's not good. So make sure that you, know, you wait at least a year. Uh, again, after surgery, your chances of getting pregnant is so much higher. Um, one, one patient here uh, is asking, do we continue taking our routine meds after surgery? Right, right. Yes, yes it's very important uh, to continue with your routine medicine at mm -hmm. home. And, and that's why it's very important to make an appointment with your physician at home because uh, they need to, or you need to be very good your your uh, your uh, blood pressure or your uh, glucose or diabetes medication because maybe in a in a in a few weeks you're not going to need it anymore so that can be a discontrol all that so uh, the first days it's important to take it but in a in a couple of weeks maybe you're not going to the ninety or ninety five percent not going to need it anymore. Well, one thing I need to add is when you get approved, the surgeon recommends which meds to keep taking and which ones to stop. Definitely, you want to take no ibuprofen one week before and one week after surgery, but still, the rest of the medication you take, they're going to tell you what to take and what not to take. If you have any question, please ask your coordinator so they can ask the surgeon and get the answer for you. Make sure you're taking the right medications. Yes, the, like the aspirin is the other one. The aspirin or the blood thinners are yeah. very important to, to, to keep under control all that because to prevent uh, uh, bleeding during the surgery after surgery. Okay, um, so they're asking uh, about vaccination. Do we re require vaccination? No. However, you know, for your own safety and everyone's safety, we recommend you get vaccinated. Um, also, they're asking how long after, if they got infected with COVID, how long after that they, they can come back and get surgery? Okay. Well, uh, the recommendation after... If, if you have a very, in a few, a few days you have COVID, uh, the recommendations of our internist is to, to wait at least one month to, to a new schedule. Um, obviously, when all the patients come with us uh, to our facilities, we make the, the CT scan. If you continue with, uh, with some image on your lungs, and, and the, our, our internist is going to evaluate you to check your lung, your heart, and your CT scan and labs. And he will determine 
if you're, you can you can go and have the, the surgery. Uh, but but after one month, six weeks, um, it, it's no no problem to have. Um, so we talked about safety of the patients coming to Mexico. Uh, I'm just going to emphasize that this is as safe as it can be. Um, again, you are always surrounded by our staff and the areas we go. Honestly, um, when I go myself, I hang out at night. I go places myself and I actually enjoy um, just the atmosphere down there. So it's very friendly. It's very safe. There's no need to worry. Uh, most patients come alone. Some choose to bring companion. Of course, you know, when you bring a companion, they also have, a, a, you know, chance of getting exposed to COVID. But if you come alone, it's actually better. You'll be safe. We handle you from the time we pick you up, from the time we drop you back in San Diego in a very safe manner. Okay, so um, that. Um, they talk, uh, do you wanna answer the one that said, do you normally cramp or get a lot of gas after surgery? Um, when, when we finish the surgery, we take out all the gas of the abdominal cavity, but obviously all patients are different. They expect or, or experience different kind of symptoms. Some patients can have uh, more, more uh, gas symptoms or uh, shoulder discomfort or nausea. It will depend of, of each patient, but uh, some, some of them can experience some cramps. But, but, but it will be a question of minutes. And it's normally because after a surgery, uh, everything and you start your activity, everything inside start moving again. So we, we expect to, to have that kind of symptoms. Okay, sorry, I just have to answer this one. Um, how soon can you, after surgery, you can drink coffee? <laughs> That's the one I was reading to. Uh, well, uh, surgery can the the coffee can can irritate can you can irritate inside your stomach. You have you have a recent a recent surgery. Uh, it's not recommend to take some some coffee on the first weeks. So uh, we 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 recommend to to wait to wait a a couple of of uh, of weeks once you start with your with your normal meals uh, because it can be irritate your stomach very severe. Um, so let's talk about hair loss because hair loss happens a few months after the surgery. Yes, mm -hmm. more with the with the with the malabsorptive procedures like the bypass or the mini bypass, you can experience that kind of, of, of hair loss. But if you you, have, you take your pills of, of vitamins, minerals, have a, a good uh, nutritional plan, uh, the, the, the weight loss can be minimum of, of, of loss. It's not with the, with the, with the sleep, with, because it's only a, a restrictive surgery, it's not a malabsorptive. So that's very important to take your vitamins. And, and minerals to, to prevent all that. Uh, how about dumping syndrome? Dumping syndrome is the, one of the most common, uh, most in the patients with the, with the R and Y, because like I already told them, um, it's a, a change in the transit, gastrointestinal transit, so, uh, once you take uh, some kind of meals, uh, you will you will you will know with the, in the time what kind of meal causes more more dumping syndromes than than others. 
So uh, it, it's common, it's common, and but people with the time um, start to to know what's going what's going to cause that that damping syndrome. So um, is one of the changes. Is one of the changes in the risk uh, with the with the RNY. We don't take uh, clear credit, unfortunately. We're not able to process that. So it's either uh, pay out of the pocket. So we do accept Zelle credit card. The credit card has 5% uh, extra, but any other payment, um, you can do bank transfer. You can pay cash, bring it with you, um, so or go to our bank. So there are all these options to pay um, or financing. Um, if if you if your primary care physician, when you go back, um, is not somehow willing to see you, there are so many others that they they will and they can. Um, so, um, another good thing about our Facebook support group is if you can ask them if you, if they live in your area, if what they recommend, um, to see as a primary care physician, um, and you can investigate and find the one that is right for you. Um. Okay. Um, yeah, we do um, FMLA. We do fill out your FMLA for time off work. Our administrator does that for you. If you need, you can send it to the, your coordinator and they will transfer it to get it done. Um, so, one thing we're going to touch about this hair loss and vitamin at the end, I will go over it. So, um, so patient is asking, they have ulcerative, ulcerative colitis and did not lose weight band. with the lab band. Yes. Yes. Yeah. This option. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the sleep, the revision of lab band for, uh, for, uh, uh, sleep is a good option, will be a good option for you to prevent, to catch the, the, the intestine. So you choose, choose a, a revision lab band to, to gastric sleep. Okay. Oh, shoot. Um, to insurance for the county. Okay. Um, well, they're asking about what is the percentage of how much weight do, should they expect to lose and what's the risk of weight regain? The, again, it depends on each patient, okay? Uh, the, if you want to have the uh, great success of your surgery, because if you're having surgery, you're having a, a you're doing a big step, okay? So after that, that's why it very it's very important. It's very important to continue with your with your plan nutrition and make some kind of exercise. The most expect weight loss are in the first two years, okay? Are in the first two years. So um, after that, if you want to continue losing weight, continue uh, with a nutritionist plan. And, and, and some kind of exercise and you can continue losing weight, okay? Um, about the, some, ask, some patient is asking about the, the revisions. Uh, it's not, not very common, a revision, but uh, it, it you, if you want a revision, have a lot of factors. The most is the, the, the weight loss, gaining weight again. Uh, it depends what kind of procedure you have previously. Uh, if you if you have a, a, a sleep will be more more um, effective to convert the uh, to take a restrictive surgery to malabsorptive surgery so you can you can lose more more weight so 
So the people who are um, asking me to switch their HQ to Dr. Montavo, I'm just going one by one, but the ones that don't provide any names, I cannot know who you are to switch you, but I'm going one by one to make note in my note here to, to switch them to Dr. Montavo. Um, Another thing is about gallbladder. They're asking, can you remove gallbladder while you're doing the surgery? Yes, we can, we can remove the gallbladder during the surgery. Um, but I, I always um, ask to the patient why they want to remove it, okay? Because um, it's important, the most important here to know when we're going to remove the, the, the gallbladder is to know if you have some gallstones, okay, of the, or uh, have a previous ultrasound that said your, your, your gallbladder is not functioning normally. Uh, you have some previous pains uh, on your, of your gallbladder. Uh, it's, it's very important to have all that information. But we can do it, we can do it during the surgery. Yeah, you can ask for that option before you get there or after, and we just add that additional fee and the doctor gets it done. And the other one is that if you already know that you have a, a yatal hernia or have a previous endoscopy that said you, that you have a yatal hernia, uh, we can do it on the, on the same, on the, on, on the same uh, surgery. So the way it works for the companion is if you bring somebody with you because of COVID, we're not allowing them to stay overnight at the hospital for safety, for their safety, for safety of the patients, for safety of our staff, for medical staff. And they stay in the hotel. For those nights that you are in the ho hospital and they stay alone in the hotel, they be paying for the hotel and we arrange for all that when we sign you up. Okay, so we need Jennifer King Greek. Okay. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't show the Zoom user and I can't, um, can't switch them. Okay. Uh, the patient said, would you recommend which one of the surgeries is the best for our needs? Yes, obviously. When I get your HQs, I check all of that, check what kind of medical issues you have and what is the best. I make a recommendation for you. Here, uh, are pain medications prescribed or should I obtain from my primary care? No, when we... Uh, um, when you get the surgery, you have pain med antibiotics, and when when you go out from the hospital, you take some uh, for for take uh, your house. No problem for that. And the pain med, you're going to need it only at least five days, and that's it. Some patients don't need some more more pain meds for three days because are very tiny the incisions and are the, the most uh, symptoms are from the incisions. Um, just looking through, um... So there, there are multiple questions about acid reflux and gastric sleeve and bypass. So like Dr. Montavo said, um, if you do have, I mean, acid reflux can be caused by so many different factors. Um, Dr. Montavo mentioned, like it could be from hiatal hernia, it could be from the valve not closing. So there's so many reasons. And um, 
sometimes actually sleep if it's from like being obese and having the acid reflux it helps but if it's due to other factors you may want to consider uh, gastric bypass um, Uh, does, does surgery improve sleep? Dr. Montalvo, you are um, muted. Uh, yeah, sorry, well, how was it? Uh, what's the best procedure for uh, sleep? Do I sleep better? Does, does surgery improve my sleep? Oh yeah, of course, of course. Because um, uh, obviously with more overweight you have, uh, you can have more problems to sleep. You don't uh, rest well and you can have some problems with your breathing. So uh, when you start losing weight, obviously you take off all that risk factors. And, and, and the most important is the, the cardiovascular uh, factors that you're going to, to take away, all right? Like strokes, like blood pressure, uh, diabetes, mm, the cholesterol, all that, so obviously you're going to, to feel much better, you're going to rest better, you're going to make your normal activities better. Uh, at work, you can work better, play with your kids, all that. Going to, your change is going to, to change immediately. Um, back to the question of how much weight do I lose? Um, they all, you know, all the, Resources that you look at, they say, well, you lose like 70% or 85% extra weight and all that. I mean, it all depends on your diet after your genetics age, of course, um, and how active you, you are. There is no set standard of how much weight do you lose. We see patients with the sleeve that they get all the way to their goal weight, whether it's a hundred pounds or you've seen patients have lost 200 pounds with the gastric sleeve or even more. Uh, they have lost half of their weight to become uh, healthy. And same with the bypass. We are just talking to a patient that was 328 and now she was 130. So there is no set number that we give you, but you definitely gonna lose weight. It's a tool that you acquire that you need to work with and um, you know, to get to where you want, just use your tool. You know, uh, you have, whether you get the, the sleeve, which is the restriction, you can always, you know, go back and do the diet right, do the exercise, and get back to your goal weight. Other patients uh, ask here about the acne. Is it going to be worse after surgery? No, obviously, uh, can be better because the acne is related with the hormones. So once you get your surgery and start losing weight, your hormones is going to equilibrate. Okay, so. The, um, is expect to the acne uh, is going to be better. Maybe not going to disappear because it will take some time and need some antibiotics and all another kind of, of medication. About uh, the, the surgeries from sleep to, to bypass, uh, 
it, it, it's common. It's common to some patients that already have some, some gastric sleep, one or a vision uh, to sleep to a, to a bypass. So yeah, we, we, we make some it, it, it's, it's more common from R and Y to another R and Y. So, but, but yeah, we can do it. About how often do procedures go wrong or medical interventions? Less of 1%, less of 1%. Okay, so one thing that um, we recommend you do is if you have access, get your blood test done before you go. And this is not, uh, because we're gonna do our own tests when you go down there, but if your hemoglobin is down or whatever, it will, it will, especially for patients who go through revision, you know, because when you do, the first surgery, it may affect your hemoglobin level. So if you do just a um, normal um, blood test, it would show. So you have some understanding of what could be um, needed before you go. So that's one thing we recommend. Um, if you do have access to get a PCR test or any um, test for COVID, we also recommend that because in case you are infected and it's not showing, you would not go on the plane and other places and to our facilities to infect everyone else. Again, like Dr. Montalvo mentioned, we do our own CT scan when you get down there, which is uh, the best uh, indication of what is going on with your lungs and all that. But um, but again, you know, um, we do recommend that you be vaccinated. We do recommend that you do the test before you come, do the blood test, especially if you're revision. Um, um, so, yes, yes, this is very important. It's very important important to have all that in information previous your surgery. Will it help with sciatica? Obviously, obviously, because you're going to, to take up some weight of your back. So you can, it will be better your, your, the compression of your nerves. So uh, you're going to, you're going to move more, more, you're going to have more activity, more, more, uh, you can move more. So uh, you're going to need less medication for that. So obviously it's going to, to help a lot with the sciatica because sciatica is related with the, with the overweight. Now they're asking why is it not safe to get pregnant at least one year out from the surgery? Uh, because you're having some changes on your hormones and your body. So obviously your, your baby will need to everything be under control in your body, to have all the nutrition, your hormones and all that. So the, the revisions told us that we need to, to, to wait at least, at least two years. So, but some patients don't wait. And with these all changes at the year, they're having their baby. So but, but if you can wait uh, and, and have a, a control with your obstetric control, go, go with them, with your physician, and, and they will know when will be the best time to, to be pregnant. Here's another patient asked that they have nodules on the lungs for COVID last year. Patients with, with lungs issues, uh, it's very important to send us a pulmonologist uh, 
validation to, to know or our internists to have that information is very important um, because we can think it's an, it's an our condition, but uh, you are okay to have the surgery. So if you can send them, send us uh, this kind of information of your lungs or if you have some kidney uh, failure or condition, please send us the specialist um, validation so we can be, uh, we can know all that. Now, about the COVID test, some flights or some, maybe if you're Canadian, you need to go back to Canada, you may need to present a PCR test. And we would do a 12 hour or faster PCR test if you are required to show it on the way out. So no worries, we just charge you for it and we get it done and we hand it to you so you can present it to your um, airline or at the border. So if you need that, please let uh, our coordinators know. So if you are in, you, you have submitted your health questionnaire with a different doctor and you get the raffle and you win the raffle, you, we can still, um, if you still want to switch, we can switch you. So as long as you have done the health questionnaire and you attend the webinar all the way, you're fine. So um, patient is asking, I'm scheduled for hysterectomy in May. When should I schedule for sleeve surgery? Um, at least six months after, after an abdominal surgery. That's uh, to the time that you're going to heal inside and the, the, the scars inside uh, can be... Uh, we can we can uh, take them off and all that, but if you have a, an abdominal surgery, uh, you need to wait at least six months. One of the options of uh, sleeve revision is uh, re-sleeve but we don't recommend that and our surgeons don't recommend it. Um, maybe in some cases it's still possible, but if you want Dr. Montalvo to explain more. Um, well, at least with me, I don't recommend to do another sleeve or a sleeve if you already have that, that kind of surgery. Why is this? Because, um, there is sleep, the, the sleep is a restricted procedure. So uh, I, I think the, all the surgeons put the boogie inside your stomach to calibrate and take out all the rest of the stomach, 80, 85% of the stomach. So it's not very probably that they can take more stomach out or, or make another kind of procedure to make a restrictive or makes more restriction to that to that stomach so uh, the, the weight loss is not going to function in these cases so that's why we recommend to to make or uh, to convert the or make a revision from a, a sleeve 
to a bypass, from a restrictive surgery to a malabsorptive surgery. So the weight loss is going to be more huge. So I guess I might have said it in a way that it wasn't explained right. Uh, we do accept credit cards. However, there is a 5% extra for, for credit card payments. So you're welcome to pay with credit card. Actually, we have an online form that you can go ahead and do it on your own, very simple. So I'm trying to get everyone that wanted to get switched to Dr. Montavo here, Kathy. Wow, we got a lot of requests for switching doctors. Star. It is possible to, to still build muscle after this surgery? Yes, of course. If you take your, your vitamins, uh, vitamins, minerals, and the protein, of course you can continue uh, building some muscle and you can go back to the, to, to the gym. No problem with that. Even if you have a malabsorptive surgery. Okay, so um, Um, if you um, wanted to get a single incision procedure, um, we have to sign you up with a different doctor. Um, what about asthma patients? Does that affect the CT scan? Um, it, 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 it's important to have a previous study. It will not, I think it will not affect, it will not affect uh, to have the surgery. But if you have some cha changes on the CT scan, our internist is going to validate that uh, information and, and it's not, no, no problem. But when you have a mass on your, on your lungs or something like that, uh, we need more studies. And, and if you have... Um, uh, the pneumologist validation or they uh, are clear that you don't have any problems, please send us privilege your surgery. They're asking, I have VP shunt. I'm not sure what that is, but um, will the surgeon be able to do the surgery? VP and then shunt, S-H-U-N-T. Uh, blood, blood pressure and a heart shunt. shunt. Cool. If, if that is a, a cardiac uh, issue, uh, we need, we need the, the the cardiologist validation. We need the cardiologist validation in this kind of patients to know that we, we uh, uh, that you can have the surgery and no problem with that. It just, I think is the part that they do ventricolopritoneal 
Sean, I think it's in the brain, no? Well. Yeah, it's something in the brain. Well, if it's in the brain, uh, you have the neurologist validation that it's no problem to have the surgery will be better. Or that you are under control with that. So just send us the, 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 your, your neurologist notes. Would uh, thyroid removal affect surgery? After surgery, uh, if you have if you you have some some thyroid issues, yeah, no problem to to remove it. Okay, so if you have had previous, if the patient has had previous tummy tuck, is that going to be a problem for doing the laparoscopic surgery? Uh, yeah, the, a, a lot of patients that we uh, make the surgery have tummy tucks. So that's not a contraindication to make the surgery. Okay, and I wanna mention something that we observe because we do um, skin removal and plastic surgeries mostly uh, for post-bariatric patients. And what we see is sometimes um, patients come in not, not bariatric patients, but some patients come in and ask for plastics or lipo, thinking that with the liposuction or body sculpturing, they can lose weight as well. But that's not the case. If your BMI is more than probably 33, you should look into getting bariatric surgery first and then plastics because plastic is not going to resolve the obesity problem. And uh, the best time to do um, mommy makeover, tummy tuck or breast lift, all that is probably one, at least one and a half year out from your surgery uh, that you feel like you, you have reached your, your goal weight and you are pretty much stable and you're not losing weight. I would say probably two years is the best. Um, one thing that um, we we'll try to, um, to answer as much of the questions we could. Um, like I said, our participant numbers was at the high end today and um, for, this, for example, this patient has become, we see a lot of patients that they actually uh, change their shape and they become bodybuilders and they, they gain so much muscle. It's just your diet and your lifestyle. Um, um, so talking about the vitamins, um, MBC has his own line of vitamins called Emerge. Emergebariatrics.com is the website you can go to and um, order these vitamins, which is specifically made for post-bariatric patients because post-bariatric patients require certain amount of supplements and vitamins, not like normal uh, people who haven't had the surgery. So those over-the-counter multivitamins is not going to be sufficient or it gives you the right ingredient. We recommend bariatric vitamins. It comes in a soft chew, chewable and uh, drinkable. We also have it in capsule and you can order all these. You can order it when you fill out your consent form so it will be shipped to you, or you can go online on imageberiatrics.com. We heavily recommend that you take bariatric vitamins. For bypass, mini bypass, do the note switch, this is a lifetime commitment. And at least for one and a half years out, two years for sleeve, we recommend that you take the vitamins. 
Um, I did not get to all the people that wanted to switch to Dr. Montavo. The ones I got, I pretty much text uh, message you back. If you didn't hear back from me, uh, please contact your coordinator to do so. It's not a big deal. You just have to ask them to switch you. Also, remember that our calendar in January is almost full. Uh, and uh, some maybe halfway through February. So if you are scheduled for that period or you're looking to get the surgery for that period, you really need to make sure Dr. Montavo is available because from what I know, he's pretty much booked out a few weeks, okay? So remember that. Um, I'm going to actually um, get the raffle right now. Uh, and um, see who is the lucky person to not only get the surgery, but also get $2,000 off. Okay, so give me a moment, please. So all the uh, names of people who have done the HQ and observed our webinar all the way to the end are entered into this bowl. And I'm going to shake it all up and pick one name and see who that name is. So the name is Tabitha Warden. I hope I said the name right. And I can see if they're still online. I can um, open it up so they can talk to us. There we go. I'm going to open it up, Tabitha, so you can talk to us and see if I was successful. Um, I think you might have uh, picked the wrong person. Oh. My name is Tamara, not Tabitha. I'll take it though. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it was it was uh, switching back and forth. I guess she actually. I just lost her. <laughs> okay, well. If you, um, because I just saw her name and I clicked, I guess, because it's um, jumping up so much. I'm sorry, I opened the wrong person. But uh, again, you can contact our um, office here, or your coordinator, and we can schedule you for, um, for the surgery done. Uh, I appreciate um, every one of you to spend your time with us. I hope that you got your answers, questions, and uh, Dr. Montavo, I know you're very busy, but I appreciate you also joining us and hope to see you again. Thank you so much. We see you the next uh, time in February. Goodbye. <laughs>